So this is Dimitri, the author of the upcoming book on fine violin making, Violin Maker, coach and violoncello despala pioneer, violoncello despala maker. And today I'm talking to you as uh, very frequently I do from my violin making studio. What I want to do in this video, listen to this because this is very important. Uh, I want to play for you two violoncellos da spalla, two completely different instruments. So one of these instruments has been uh, created for uh, a client of mine in the United States. The instrument is in the white, it's not yet varnished, and in a moment I'm going to play it for you and I will actually explain why I always play instruments in the white before I begin to varnish them. So this instrument has been strung very recently, about two weeks ago or so, and I've been working on the sound, shaping the sound exactly to the liking and the character of the player. And this is the instrument that has been made for myself in 2005. That's a long time ago. And well, I want to play these two instruments for useful, for the sake of comparison. I will play a few pieces, the same piece on the same instrument, so one after another. What I also want to do, I want to, well, for surely I would like to invite you to join this uh, live stream and do comment below where you are joining from, what do you do, whether you're an instrument maker, whether you are maybe a musician, maybe you've been following me for a long while, maybe you are seeing me the very first time ever. And uh, of course, I'm here to ask any questions that you might potentially have. So stay around and do comment, do participate actively. What I'm going to do now, before I grab the white instrument or the varnished instrument first, I'm going to refresh my stream on Facebook so that I can see your comments. Also, do please comment below this video if the sound is clear, because sometimes there are technical glitches. <laughs> And I did run live events in the past where I um, held, I spoke for five minutes and only then discovered that actually there was no audio. So let's avoid this. Okay, let me scroll down and see where's the live stream. So here we are. Good, good, good. I don't see where are the comments actually. Wait a moment. I see somebody's watching. So at this moment, there are no comments. Anyway, good, 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 good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, grab this instrument one more time. And before I do so, I will reintroduce myself one more time is since potentially you are seeing me the first time. So I'm Dimitri, I'm the author of the upcoming book on fine violin making. And I am a mentor coach for instrument makers, for musicians as well. And definitely I'm a real shoulder spiller maker. Now I'm going to play and Wow, that would be amazing if you share your thoughts and your feelings about the instruments and how these two instruments compare in your opinion. I'm interested to learn your opinion much more than maybe you want to share. And now, without further ado, let's start from and let's play. I will begin with the old instrument uh, made in 2005. And this instrument has been used in a number of recordings. I played it with La Petite Band when I was still playing professionally. So this instrument definitely has been played in a lot. And now I'm going to play a few pieces for you. And by the way, when you feel like you want me to stop playing, just comment below this video. And if you have some really pressing and important questions to ask, well, don't hesitate and simply ask. All right, so there we go. Perhaps I will uh, pause uh, for a little while and uh, take the other instrument because it is very interesting uh, comparing different instruments and you can also potentially hear the difference between the two. Uh, well, 17 years of experience that what I would call this difference is 
because it's been since 70 and actually maybe even more years I have been creating these instruments for world-class musicians and if you have been following me for a few days or a few weeks or months or years probably you know you heard potentially about some of um, my clients and what they do they are really amazing musicians also my partners instrument makers who have been creating these instruments for their clients in their countries now I'm going to play <laughs> between the two instruments do comment below this video and by the way do not hesitate to uh, share who you are what you do where you're joining us from from which country from which continent in the world and uh, that would be very interesting and of course if you have any questions you would love to ask me about anything you want about this instrument what is violoncello da spalla where does it come from how does that affect the lives of music professionals those makers those of the makers and those of the players naturally um, what is the repertoire? How do you play it? How do you touch it? Uh, what is the bow? What is the length of the instrument? What is the tuning of the instrument? Whatever you want to ask, you are very much welcome to ask during this live. Let me double check if I can see the comments. I see there are already two shares. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So there are a few people watching. And well, let me see if there are any comments. Okay. I hope that there is no technical glitch and um, I can hopefully see your commenting. Now let me play a few more pieces, why not? Okay, so I'm now going to play uh, with, I will begin with the white instrument that has been just created for a customer in the United States, as I mentioned earlier, and after that I will play the same prelude by Johann Sebastian Bach on the varnished instrument. <laughs> instrument by the way if you are enjoying this uh, video don't hesitate to maybe share it with some of your friends by the way I have an idea I am going to share this video with a group one of the finest groups on Facebook known as the violin guild so and then we will continue. So let me share this. There we go, the violin guild. Uh, 
you might enjoy this. Done. Brilliant. And now I'm going to play the varnished instrument for you. I have recorded all six suites for violoncello solo by Johann Sebastian Bach on this gorgeous instrument. And when I have had the blessing to be a core member of one of the finest and one of the most famous Baroque orchestras on planet, La Petite Band, I have been using this instrument from 2005. So I'm going to play the same piece. By the way, if you want me to play something else, simply comment below and I will do my best. <laughs> when you compare the two instruments the newest one and the oldest one that would be very fun sometimes violinists uh, ask me Dimitri is it very difficult to play violoncello da spalla because violoncello da spalla is um, a big instrument and as you can see it is bigger than violin and you can see it is bigger than the vast majority of violas and if you ever played violin or viola and uh, hopefully you did because um, well primarily I'm addressing this video to violin players and viola players then probably notice that playing the violin can be tiring because you have to support the weight of the instrument with your with your hand and if you are a violinist and you try to play the viola you probably notice that it can be very tiring indeed because the viola, viola is bigger viola is heavier and the distances especially um, between the notes are larger that means that there is potentially more strain on your left hand and this instrument is even more is even bigger and so I have noticed that a number of violinists even professional violinists and violists somehow uh, tend to assume that if playing the violin is difficult if playing the viola is even more difficult then playing this instrument must be simply impossible and I want to address this belief because this is actually quite far from the reality depending on the piece of course of course there are some difficult pieces but it is very far from the reality now what do i mean by this you see this instrument in contrast to the violin or viola is attached to your chest with the aid of a strap what does that mean so there is a strap a leather strap and the instrument is uh, hanging on the strap and that means that there is absolutely no weight of the instrument for you to support therefore it is way more relaxing to play this instrument than to play the violin or the viola yeah does it make sense but if you have any questions or comments do comment below this video and i will do my very very best to answer all of your questions that you may have during this live and if i miss something i will uh, follow up and i will answer your questions later now when it comes to the left hand position let me adjust the camera so that you can see better my left hand um, when it comes to the left hand position you uh, notice when you play the violin or the viola we tend to well, we hold the instrument under the chin which we don't do with violoncello 
right? And when we play, where is the, here's my left hand. So when we play violin and viola, we stretch the pinky. On the violoncello da spalla, the position of the instrument is very different. Therefore, we, we stretch the first finger more than the pinky, which makes it very much easy to play. By the way, the string length from this instrument is considerably longer than that on the violin and the viola, and you might again think that due to the string length it must be very difficult to play. Again, it's different. Why? Because of the position of the hand. By the way, lutes, guitars, cellos, all these instruments have much longer string lengths than on the violin, but it is very easy to play because, again, it's a very different posture. In this posture, it is much more, it's easier, it's more natural to open your palm much wider so that you can easily reach all the notes. Now, about the fingering, one very frequently asked questions. Uh, Dimitri, what kind of fingering do you use on the violin shoulder spine? I'm a violinist or I'm a violist. Does it mean that I have to learn a different fingering? Well, the good news is, and most of the time on this instrument, you play with the violin or the viola fingering. Of course, there are a few examples where you might want to switch to a uh, cello fingering and even skip a finger or two, or play in half position. Uh, there are many tricks on this instrument that allow you to keep your hands relaxed at all times. By the way, if you have um, never heard a, um, any professional playing on this instrument, I strongly recommend you uh, find videos by La Petite Band on YouTube. And there is an um, Osaka video, La Petite Band, Brandenburg on Chetty, recorded live in Oscar. And then you will see three violoncelli da spalla on the stage, which is recorded live. By the way, I'm there among the players. And you will see how these instruments sound in an orchestra context. And besides this, because I strongly recommend find what one of some of my customers do, such as Rio Terracato and Sergei Malov, who took this instrument to a completely another realm. So he's playing also the 19th century repertoire on this instrument, cello concerti from the 19th century and Beethoven, and uh, not to speak about, not to mention the earlier repertoire. There's a lot of music you can play on this instrument really, really easily. So um, let me refresh the live stream one more time so that I can double check if there are any comments so that I can respond to your questions. I see that I are, but I cannot read the comments. Wait a second, let me refresh it one more time. All right, okay. Now I'm not going to watch my own video. <laughs> That's silly. Stop, pause. All right, so I'm now going to play a few more pieces on these two instruments. Let me play something on the five strings. So the six cello suite, something from the six cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. Thank you. 
what it sounds like. The instrument made in 2005. This is my fourth instrument. And this was a really a fascinating journey of creating the very first one for La Petite Band for Sigiswald Kirken, the second one for um, Erio Terracado, the third one, and this one I was making at the same time with an instrument for one of my colleagues and friends, uh, Sam Montgomery from Paris. So, um, by the way, I'm also working with instrument uh, makers and potentially some way under this video or within this video, you will see um, information about my group for instrument makers. So if you are interested, this is where I teach instrument makers how to build this instrument without having to uh, spend six months traveling across Europe, uh, across all the museums and, you know, do the research. And um, just imagine how much it would cost you if you would have to stop you, all your work for six months in order to just come up with a model that works. And well, you didn't have to do this. You can leverage the model that is there and works. And you know how it works because you can simply check La Petite Van videos and the amazing videos by Sergei Malov. I strongly recommend you discover this artist if you have not done so yet. Another question. So um, there is another question that I hear very frequently from amazing musicians. So they uh, ask me frequently, Dimitri, uh, do I have to be a um, three meters tall <laughs> person in order to play this instrument? Well, the truth is, no, you do not have to be a giant person. So uh, that means that even, even if you are a tiny man or tiny woman, you can still play this instrument. By the way, my wife plays this instrument brilliantly. She's Japanese and she's by um, all means, she's not a giant person. And she's uh, approximately up to, up to here. Uh, with a small hand. Now, you might be wondering how on planet Earth is this even possible? And a few minutes ago, I explained to you how this is possible and why even a small person can play this instrument with ease, flow and freedom and express yourself as a musician with elegance and eloquence and move your audiences. The thing is, because, and remember this is very important, because the Playing hand is in a very different posture. Essentially, your elbow is almost touching your hip. This is where your elbow is. You do not stretch your arm. That means that actually where your finger is much closer to your body, right? So you, need, you can be a much smaller person and you can play this instrument way more comfortably than the violin or especially the viola. And the second factor, which is also extremely important, and I want you to remember this, the left hand uh, posture, which is more like on the guitar, lute, viol, cello, it's not quite the same as on the violin. Yes, we play with the violin fingering. Yes, you can play this instrument straight away, potentially in a number of days, I mean, a couple of days, you can be on stage with your ensemble or as a soloist, um, because you can directly transfer as one of my customers said, and great musician Sigiswald Kaken, if you are a violinist or violist, it is pretty straightforward. You can directly transfer your existing technique for the violin and the viola onto the violoncello, the spalla, and go ahead and play it and just and, and heal yourself through music and heal your audiences through music. So this is how it works. I want to double check one more time where are the comments. I have the feeling that, uh, yes, there we go. Um, un saludo desde Santander, España. Uh, hello, Puri. Good. So if you have any questions, uh, comment below this video. Just to remind you, if you have never seen me uh, before, my name is Dimitri. I'm the author of the upcoming book on fine violin making. I'm a speaker. I'm a mentor and coach. I'm helping both instrument makers and musicians to be way more successful. And I'm very passionate about creating custom designed instruments that are the right fit for musicians. And I'm also very, very passionate about helping other instrument makers to serve their clients uh, even, even better. So, um, yes, I'm going to play now one more piece. Well, actually, let me play the same piece, the same um, uh, movements from the sixth cello suite so that you can later go back and forth in this video and for your own enjoyment, compare the sounds of these two instruments. In my opinion, if I were absolutely uh, honest with you, so in my opinion, this instrument at this point sounds a little bit, just a tad too open. It is already rich and ripe. It has all this depth. It has this depth of a real cello. 
uh, combined with the ease of playing of uh, viola, if not violin. And what is missing for my taste in this instrument, and you might agree potentially with me, some a tad darker character in this instrument. Now that will come from the varnishing. That will come from the varnishing. At this point when the instrument is white, I want it to sound just a little bit too woody, if that makes sense. Let me play another piece. And also let me refresh this feed if you have any questions around the instrument, around any comments, any thoughts on the sound of this instrument, how do you get a hold of these instruments, if they're available in your country or not, um, comment below, okay? And if you miss this live stream, uh, if you miss, um, if you don't know what to ask during this live stream and you come with an idea, hey, I have to ask Dimitri uh, about the historical background of this instrument, what can I play in this instrument? Well, comment below later and we will have a conversation about that. By the way, uh, there is a lovely group on Facebook, uh, the Violin Guild, so there are 40 plus thousand violinists. Um, if you are a violinist, you might potentially be interested in joining this amazing group. There's another group, the Spala community, and this is where lots of enthusiasts and pioneers and ambassadors to this page in electro historic classical music connect with each other. There are also other instrument makers. If potentially you don't like my work and you prefer to work with somebody else, so you can find other instrument makers. Um, there is also a group, um, the Old Masters um, Acoustic Bootcamp and Luthiers and Legacy Podcast. There are a number of groups where I actually work very closely with my partners, instrument makers from all around the world. Go ahead, explore. If you have any questions, again, I'm here to help. Let me play the same piece. <laughs> professional page, Badiara Violins. 
I also do have a website by the art of violins dot com. By the way, I have recorded all six cello suites by Johann Sebastian Bach already a number of years ago. Uh, it was recorded when I was still performing quite frequently. I haven't been on stage for over 10 years and I have been, been practicing this instrument for about as much other than, well, except for um, five, 10 minutes every now and then. And so yeah, you can, you can simply download this uh, entire recording completely free of charge. If you, want. if you want, you can even get a free physical copy and that you can find on violoncellodaspalla.com, violoncellodaspalla, we uh, all attached with double L's dot com. Now, if you have any questions, do comment below this video. If you have any thoughts to share, comment below. Great. Uh, let me check. Uh, hello, Annie. Excellent interpretation, friend. Yep, spare uh, pronto, tener en Mexico, abrazos. Muchas gracias. By the way, I work with um, instrument uh, with musicians from literally all around the world. And believe it or not, well, it, it may uh, sound strange to you as a musician, maybe you have never heard that concept before, but the reality is in the past few years already, I've been uh, getting orders for my instruments from all around the world, most of the time from musicians who have never met me before. And most of the time, nearly 100% of the time indeed, from the musicians who have even never tried my instruments before. Or, and now you might be wondering, how is that even possible? Well, because, look, I, I have invested in the very beginning, in order to create this instrument, in order to create an instrument, I actually made two instruments for Sigismund Kagan. Uh, well, to be exact, I made six instruments for him, but I made two spalas. In order to make the first spala for um, Sigiswald, I really took it very close to my heart and I really wanted to deliver my very best because I'm a perfectionist. And that means that I have uh, spent uh, six months studying this instrument to just to create the design that will work at a cost of 72,000 euros and plus 17 years of experience while uh, working always more or less at around the same model. I do have different models and I am perfectly capable to create a unique design that would be the right fit for you using a very robust ancient system of design that guarantees getting certain result um, with absolute predictability. And this is why musicians from all around the world are falling in love with the process, with the guarantees and with the work ethic that I have been practicing my entire life and uh, order my instruments by the hips. So if you have any questions, comment below this video. Uh, for now, I think I will uh, round up this live broadcast put the instrument on the bench. So I'm going to uh, round up this broadcast. Many thanks everyone who joined and uh, if you have any questions later do comment below. Uh, once again this was Dimitri, the author of the upcoming book on fine violin making. By the way there is a website bookonviolinmaking.com and um, I'm a violin maker, violin designer, enter, mentor, coach and I'm very passionate about working with both musicians and instrument makers. So that is all for today, Monday the 27th of September in this live stream. And I wish you a very massive, massive, massive success in your professional life, uh, whatever you do, whether you are a passionate musician or an instrument maker. Take care, all the best.